All right, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dexter Dunn Navajad and my teammates are Joshua Morales and Manuel Perez and we're Team 7 presenting the Nostalgia 3-in-1 Family Size Breakfast Station. All right, so this is the basic uh, outline that our presentation is gonna follow. We're first gonna introduce the system, decompose the major components, and talk about the manufacturing and production analysis after, and then we're gonna wrap up uh, talking about the manufacturing impact that this project has following with some references and Q&A, right? So uh, this is the, uh, made the, the, the system as a whole, right? It's a composite system housing three, se se three separate subsystems such as the griddle, the oven, and the coffee pot. The major components include the non-stick griddle pan, the oven tray, the filter, the pot, the oven door, and the control panel housing. And we'll follow by the system decomposition. All right, I'm going to I'm going to be talking about the non-stick griddle plate. So you see here, it's going to be a uh, steel with coated of, on Teflon, so it can be a non-stick. Uh, as you can see here, it cannot go over 500, or it, it will start uh, exposing fumes that are dangerous to us. Uh, All right, so now we'll be talking about the oven tray, right? The oven tray is used for high heat applications and it's used to hold uh, objects or food such as bread and chicken and other things, right? It can be made out of stainless steel or aluminum and for this specific application, it's known to be corrosion resistant because we don't want any of the stuff going into the food when it's being heated up. And the next component is the coffee filter. The coffee filter is used to extract the coffee bean flavor from the actual coffee beans. And it's also used for high heat applications, not as high as the oven tray, but significantly higher either way. Uh, it's made out of a fine aluminum mesh, as you can see here, and the base of the mesh, which is right here, is made out of a thermoplastic material that is used to hold the mesh together. So this is the coffee pot. It's used for holding the coffee, which is the whole purpose of this coffee machine. Uh, you can use it for other products such as tea, hot chocolate, or any hot beverage. It must hold the coffee peak temperature for an apt amount of time, and it's going to be used um, less than 212 degrees Fahrenheit because this is the boiling point of water and coffee is not made with uh, water hotter than this and it must be ergonomic for the ease of use. And the oven door is used to maintain the oven products. Uh, it's used in high temperature applications of around 450 degrees Fahrenheit. It's made of a tempered glass which has a high uh, glass transition temperature and it houses components such as the handle which is made of Vilox which is a food grade plastic. Here we have the control uh, panel housing, which is gonna be what uh, makes the system work. So you can see it's gonna have the knobs for if you're using the grill or the, or the oven and the timer. It's gonna have a components such as the electronic components. It's gonna have either gold and the copper wires. And uh, it, it needs to be uh, the more ventilation because if not, the cable will start to melt. Uh, now we're going to go to the production manufacturing analysis. So for the oven door, we went with the stainless steel outer frame because of its low thermal conductivity and good hardness. For the glass portion, we went with the soda line glass because of its low cost and high scratch resistance and also its low thermal conductivity, which is something you want because you want to keep the heat uh, inside of the oven and you don't want the, the heat to escape and burn the user. Um, for the handles, we went with the PET plastic for its low cost and good melting temperature. Uh, over here, you can see the manufacturing plan. So first, we're going to form the sheet metal for the outer frame. Uh, then we're going to use injection molding to make the handles and then we're going to cut the top and bottom of the outer frame since there are two different uh, components. Then we're going to retrieve the glass from the rollers, apply adhesive, and then finally assemble the oven door. And the next is just the final inspection and at the bottom you can see the numbers for the different uh, tools that we use. So next we'll be talking about the production plan and manufacturing plan for the oven tray. So uh, for the material selection of the uh, oven tray, we selected uh, 
1100 aluminum because it has low production cost. It has a good enough melting temperature where like if we heat up the food, the actual tray is not gonna melt. Um, and like we said before, it has to have high corrosion resistance, which uh, 1100 aluminum does, right? Um, this specific metal was chosen over stainless steel because steel has a lower formability factor. It has a necessary high hardness, which means that like, we don't necessarily need for the actual tray to be able to not be indented. Um, and it has a higher cost, the steel, so that's why we didn't select it. Uh, the basic manufacturing plan that we're going to follow for this specific oven tray is we're going to load the sheet metal, we're going to begin the sheet metal stamping, and we're going to transport the sheet, onto the, the sheet forming, and then we're going to basically punch in the, the, the overall shape that we're going to follow. Some trays uh, have handles, so if the tray is selected to have handles, then we will begin a milling process, but for this specific project, it is not necessary. And as my partner talked about in the bottom, we have here the, 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 the tool numbers, and for this specific part, we will only be using uh, manual labor, to, uh, the, the drawing, the, the milling, and the metal processing. Okay. Right, again, right? So uh, this is the manufacturing plan and, and material selection for the coffee filter. For the coffee filter itself, the plastic rim will be used out of uh, PET plastic because it has a low cost and has a relatively good melting temperature. Um, the metal mesh that uh, composes the actual filter will be made out of 1100 aluminum due to its low cost and high formability in order to make the metal mesh. The metal mesh itself is actually made out of very fine uh, aluminum uh, tubes. So we need the actual uh, uh, metal that it's gonna be made out of to be formable in order to make the conic shape necessary. Right, and here we have the manufacturing plan for the coffee filter. Um, the first thing that we're gonna do is load the, the metal cylinder into the, the, the tube drawing machine. Then we're gonna draw the machine, uh, we're gonna draw the, the tube, and then uh, we're gonna test for the tube diameter and then redraw it if, if it's necessary. So the reason why we have to do this is because the metal mesh or the little metal wires used to make the mesh are actually a very, very fine diameter. So we need to possibly redraw and redraw the the two go over and over again in order to make sure that the actual mesh is what we need it to be. And finally, we're gonna, uh, what, once we have the diameters that we want, we're gonna lay the tubes on the mesh metal welder and the mesh metal welder will then uh, make the actual mesh itself. And after that, we're gonna configure the actual mesh into a conic fiber. And then at the end, we're just gonna assume the, uh, assemble the filter with the PET ring. So for the coffee pot, we went with a soda lime glass for its low cost, high scratch resistance, and low thermal conductivity. Uh, also the handle made of a PET plastic like we used for the handle for the oven door for its low cost and good melting temperature. Uh, to make the coffee pot, first we're going to start with the injection molding of the lid handle assembly and then we're going to form the coffee pot. We're gonna retrieve the coffee pot and then attach the lid to the coffee pot and then finally inspect it to make sure it meets all of our requirements. We have here next is the nonstick uh, plate. We have here, we chose the uh, steel 836 over the chromium because it lacks the properties and it's more expensive. As we see here, the process of doing this is going to be getting the sheet metal, doing it on a, it's, it's going to be a, a hot roll, and then we're going to go into the dimensions, go into the loading of the sheet metal, into cleaning the surface so we can have the Teflon be there as secure. As the Teflon is applied to the, to the 836 steel, it's going to be under a baking, uh, a process that they call it, which is basically putting the Teflon into the cracks of the steel. As we have here, the electronic housing, um, the coppers, for, I mean the wires for the uh, housing is going to be uh, copper. This is very cheap to get uh, compared to the other and it's very uh, uh, electrical uh, connectivity. Um, as we hear, see here, the steps is going to be Almost the same though, we're going to have, uh, what's it called, um, the dimensions of the loading steel is, is, is going to be way different. 
as we have, we have to make the holes for the uh, housing for the knobs to go into there. Uh, we're going to talk about the manufacturing impact. Next. All right, so um, the manufacturing impact that this project specifically has on the U.S. and on the world itself, like, is that um, we, the, the materials selected in this project were selected in such a way that we were able to retrieve most of the raw products for this product, for, I mean, for this project, um, from U.S. manufacturers alone, so which benefits the U.S. market. Um, by doing this, we reduce the cost of the actual product, we reduce the labor, needed to actually uh, construct the product and we reduce other things such as transportation costs and the cost to bring outside workers. Um, the components in this system were, all, uh, were actually uh, mostly reusable and reformable products since the fact that we used aluminum and steel and thermoplastic components benefiting the environment by not making a wasteful product. And these are the references and uh, sites that we used throughout the entirety of this project and now we have time for some Q&A if you guys have any questions. And since there's nobody here, so then there's no questions. Thank you.